You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Um, folks, uh, India Walton, she was a sister, a socialist, who also was endorsed by the Working Families Party, who, up, who upset a four-term incumbent uh, in Buffalo uh, to become uh, the mayor of Buffalo. There's nobody running on the Republican side, so she is going to be the winner after the primary. Uh, this is always interesting when you win and you call your mama. This was a shot by uh, a, a media outlet there in Buffalo. They posted this video, uh, and this is her uh, telling her mama, yes, mama, I won. Misha Cross, when it becomes official in November, she'll be the first um, major mayor socialist since 1960. Breaking records, making history. Um, you know, that was a beautiful video. At the end of the day, I think that there's so much that our, our elected officials carry on their backs, specifically those who are running in areas where people like them have not made it. And I think that for her, because she ran such a smart campaign, because she knew what was happening on the ground, even with all of that going on, the stakes were still really high. So, you know, kudos to her for making history, but also for having a vision and having a goal that I think that the city kind of wrapped itself around. Well, this is also, uh, Reese, what we keep saying on this show. Democrats, you can't run cooker cutty, cooker cutter races. What you have to do is understand your district which is one of the things that sort of drives me crazy when people who are actually on both sides, people who are critical of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Congresswoman from New York, um, when one, uh, how she runs in her district is totally different than how a Lucy McBath can run in her district. And so right. when you hear, and so when you hear these Dem Democratic candidates complaining about defund the police, well, first of all, maybe you just, maybe you just ran a bad campaign as well and you got lazy with it. What we're seeing are people who look at the voters, who come up with, as we always talk about, messaging, messaging that resonates with people who don't ordinarily come out and vote. And that's why we're sort of seeing these upsets in Rochester, in Buffalo, and other cities as well. Absolutely. I mean, India Walton, she did not, you know, regardless of whether you can define socialism or not, you can understand economic development. You can understand bringing jobs and tackling the housing crisis and unemployment rates are sky high in her city. And so I think what the, my takeaway from this is proving once again that black women are electable and black women are electable even when they don't come in the mold that people expect black women politicians to come in. She's a socialist. She had she had uh, twins when she was 14 years old. She's a nurse. She has so many different facets of her life experience that she's bringing to the table that's not a traditional political background and yet she won the primaries and she defeated a long-term incumbent. And so I hope that the message that people take away from this is to quit discounting and counting out black women before they even get their foot in the door. I hope that this sends a message that black people, you look at Malik Evans and you look at the, the, the woman who just won in, in Beaumont, Texas, as, as you pointed out, these are black candidates that need funding. In 2022, let's not go with the Democratic white is default mentality that they always do. Let's take a second look at a Malcolm Kenyatta or a Sherry Beasley instead of looking at a Connor Lamb or the, the white guy in... Um, in uh, North Carolina, I forget his name now, yeah. But anyway, the moral of the story is black people, when they're given the opportunity to actually compete hey, and they're him. given the opportunity to get their message across and actually meet the people on the ground and connect with them, they can actually win. So that's what I hope people learn, if nothing else, from these several races that you're highlighting. Great. No, absolutely. Uh, I think you're right, Reese. of course. Uh, this sister... Very impressive. As you said, I mean, she and her husband, they're four boys, strong family ties, uh, a major voice in her union, SEIU, 
She's a nurse by training, went back to school. And uh, most importantly, um, she was the executive director of the Fruit Belt Land Trust. Now, y'all, those, those of you in Buffalo know what the Fruit Belt is on the east side of Buffalo. First time I went to Buffalo, that's where they took me to get my hair cut. I realized, oh, y'all, you Negroes from Alabama. So 37% of Buffalo is black. And, and, and to the point that it's being raised, as we see this country literally dissolve as these white nationalists throw themselves into a frenzy, as they try to centralize power at the federal and state level, the local politics is is the future of the United States of America and whatever's going to come after this thing disintegrates. Because I, I really I really think they're going to overplay their hand. So when you're looking at India Walton, you're looking at the future of this country. And just like Malik Evans, she has a deep background in economic development. But in contrast to Malik uh, Evans, she came through the community land trust movement to stop gentrification in the fruit belt on the east side of Buffalo. Those of you interested in reparations, look up community land trusts. That's one of the ways you approach the prospect of reparations. And now at Buffalo, they've got a mayor who speaks your language. just one moment. Racial injustice is a scourge on this nation, and the black community has felt it for generations. We have an obligation to do something about it. Whether it's canceling student debt, increasing the minimum wage, or investing in Black-owned businesses, the Black community deserves so much better. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress to do something about it.